The Künker team is honored that Lottie and Mark Salton entrusted us in their will, together with Dax Bowers, with the task of auctioning their coin collection, the Salton Collection. After all, this is a collection built on the experience of generations of German coin dealers. This is Lottie and Mark Salton in their library in New York. They are the collectors behind the incredibly extensive and high-quality Salton collection. Both found their new home in New York. Both were born in Germany. They both lost relatives in the Shoah and could only save their own lives by fleeing. Mark Salton is not the man's original name. It's the name that he chose at the age of 32, when he embarked on his new life in the new world. Mark Salton was originally called Max Schlesinger. He was descended from a coin trading dynasty who operated the most important coin dealership in Germany, perhaps in all of Europe before the First World War, Leo Hamburger's coin dealership in Frankfurt. When Künker first began to catalog the Salton collection, the idea emerged to preface the coins with a short introduction outlining the role that the Hamburger and Schlesinger families played in the German coin trade. What started as a collection of material for a few pages of catalog text ended with a reworking of a previously unknown part of German numismatic history, complete with some brand new findings. This was due to the discovery of some never-before-seen sources, which enormously increase our knowledge about the origins of the Frankfurt coin trade. In fact, four members of the Hamburger and Schlesinger families left their memories behind. Through them, we are able to experience 200 years of German history from the perspective of one Jewish family. Here, young Josef Hamburger watches the French forces withdraw from the burning town of Hanau. Here, 13-year-old Adolf Hamburger worries about his bar mitzvah because the new railway is threatening to drive his father's business into bankruptcy. And Sophie Hamburger takes us with her into the parlor where the girls are getting ready for the Mainz Carnival at the turn of the century. And so, quite incidentally, these memoirs answer many of the questions that our previous sources couldn't, namely all of these why questions. Why did Leo Hamburger found his coin dealership in 1864? Where did he get his numismatic education? Why did he bring Felix Schlesinger into the company? And why didn't Felix Schlesinger stay in Frankfurt after the First World War, but rather founded his own coin dealership in Berlin? These memoirs enable us to reconstruct the history of the Hamburger Schlesinger coin trading dynasty. We have written a publication dedicated to it. It was sent to all Künker customers together with the catalogs for the spring 2022 auctions. We can trace the origins of the Hamburger family back to the Jewish ghetto of Hanau, where Löb Hamburger worked as a court factor at the turn of the 19th century. Löb Hamburger had three sons, whom he provided with an excellent education. Josef trained as a wholesaler. Jakob was sent to the rabbinical college in Würzburg and Julius studied law in Marburg. After their respective marriages, Josef and Jakob opened a wholesale business together in Hanau. Their business boomed until the new railway spoiled things for them. Now, Hanau's retailers prefer to buy their goods in the nearby city of Frankfurt, which meant that money was in short supply in the two households of Josef and Jakob Hamburger. 
as a result, Josef couldn't afford to pay an apprenticeship premium for his eldest son, Leo. But Leo was in luck. A family friend arranged an apprenticeship for him free of charge at a bank in Munich. The bank was owned by Samson Oberndorfer. His company also operated several profitable coin dealerships, including in Vienna and Munich. It was there that Leo Hamburger learned about the coin trade from scratch. Leo was a quick learner, and in 1863 he was able to open his own coin dealership in Frankfurt. This dealership was profitable and therefore able to support more than one family. Other family members earned their money there too. Leo Hamburger the Younger, Jakob's only son, was especially gifted. In 1875, Leo Hamburger the Elder made him his partner. The Frankfurt Auction House experienced its heyday as the coin dealership L and L Hamburger. From 1889 onward, it held regular auctions, selling collections that are still known to this day. The collection of Prince Alexander of Hesse, the so-called rarity cabinet of Swiss industrial magnate and politician Hans Wunderli von Muralt, the Silesian coins of Baron Hugo von Saurmajelch, and of course, the coin collection of silk manufacturer Erko Lenjecki. In 1902, Leo Hamburger the Elder died, and Leo Hamburger the Younger took over the coin dealership. Two years later, he lost his only son Siegmund to suicide. Leo Hamburger was then faced with the problem of who should replace him as manager of his coin dealership when he himself became too old to run the business. Ludwig Grödel, the husband of his younger daughter, showed no interest. And Charlotte, his eldest daughter, had married David Nussbaum, an artist who had no head for business. And so Leo Hamburger took the son of his sister Röschen into his home. Six years earlier, Röschen had lost her husband and thus the provider for her family. Leo Hamburger's offer was therefore a golden opportunity for Felix. He was able to establish himself in the coin trade, thereby securing a profession that enabled him to start a family. The capital he needed was provided in the form of his new bride's dowry. Hedwig, said bride, came from a wealthy Munich family, the Feuchtwangers. She was not only the cousin of famous writer Leon Feuchtwanger, she was also related to Leo Hamburger's wife Meta. Hedwig and Felix married in 1911. In 1912, Leo Hamburger made Felix Schlesinger his partner. And then came the First World War. Felix was there from the day one as a reserve non-commissioned officer. He was wounded, buried alive and awarded the Iron Cross. But while Felix was away fighting on the front line, his uncle Leo was bringing the business to ruin. By this point, he was in his 70s and, like many German business owners, by the way, unable to respond adequately to the inflation. When the Reichsmark was introduced on November 15, 1923, all the capital had been swallowed up. It turned out that Despite everyone's best efforts, the coin dealership was no longer yielding enough money to support the many families who depended on it. Felix Schlesinger had family links to Berlin. His sister Sophie lived there with her husband David Diamant. David owned a thriving chocolate factory. 
he provided his brother-in-law, Felix, with the means to open his own coin dealership in Berlin in 1928. Felix Schlesinger's coin dealership quickly became well established in the booming city. Customers found an extensive inventory awaiting them at Bismarckstraße 9798. This dealership also held important auctions. The names Edmund Nordheim and Richard Gettens are still well known among coin collectors today. But what made Felix Schlesinger famous were the sales of the coins and medals from the Hermitage, which were brought in by representatives of the Soviet Union between 1933 and 1935. At this point, Adolf Hitler was already Reich Chancellor. Felix Schlesinger, like all German Jews, was confronted with one anti-Semitic law after another. At first, these laws only had a minimal impact on his business, because, as an international coin dealer, Felix was securing some much-needed foreign currency for Germany. But soon afterwards, all Jewish art and coin dealers were threatened with a professional ban, with effect from September 30, 1936. For that reason, Felix and Hedwig Schlesinger decided to emigrate to Amsterdam, along with their sons Max and Paul, before it came into force. Once there, they established a new, far more modest coin dealership at Prinzengracht 701. Thanks to Felix Schlesinger's large customer base in Scandinavia, he was able to hold his first auction as early as October 1937. His son Max, now 22 years old, opened his own coin dealership at Leitschekade 83. His first fixed price list exclusively contained numismatic literature which were probably the duplicates and surplus books from the family's own library, which he had been allowed to export from Germany. But on May 10, 1940, the German Wehrmacht invaded the Netherlands. Hitler installed a puppet government, which was already passing its first anti-Semitic laws by October 1940. As a result, in February 1941, the Dutch administration confiscated all gold coins from the stock of the Schlesinger's coin dealership. This octopal Rosen noble from the Dutch city of Kampen, produced around 1600, was definitely among the confiscated pieces. We know that Felix Schlesinger bought it in 1938 for 900 gulden. Today, its value is estimated at 250,000 euros. It was just one of the 635 gold coins confiscated in February 1941. It escaped the melting pot. Mark Sultan managed to recover it in the 1950s. The confiscation of the gold coins was just the beginning. In March 1943, Felix and Hedwig Schlesinger were deported first to Westerbork concentration camp and then to the infamous Theresienstadt concentration camp. After that, the Nazis took them to Auschwitz, where they were both murdered in the gas chambers on October 25, 1944. The Reich Commissariat for the Occupied Dutch Territories confiscated all of their possessions. This is evidenced, among other things, by the meticulous list of all the books seized by the Sonderstaat Bibliotheken, a special unit for libraries, under Reichsleiter Rosenberg, to be transported to the collection point in Ratibor. 
Max managed to escape from Amsterdam, after which he made a perilous journey through occupied and free France to northern Spain. Once there, he surrendered himself to the authorities, who imprisoned him in the concentration camp of Miranda de Ebro. Max survived this ordeal too, though it cost many of his fellow prisoners their lives. After several months, he was freed by the Dutch embassy. He was sent to Lisbon, where he proved himself to be so valuable as an employee of the embassy that, after the war, he was awarded the Cruis van Verdienste for his service. In 1946, Max Schlesinger emigrated to the United States of America. In New York, he found a new home, an interesting job, and the great love of his life, Lotti Aronstein. Lotti Aronstein was also from Germany. She came from the countryside. Her father, Paul, had been a prosperous horse trader in the Westphalian town of Winnenberg before the November pogroms, when the Nazis reduced him. Once such an impressive man who had been awarded the Iron Cross in the First World War to a wreck. In the fall of 1939, Paul Aronstein fled with his children, 15-year-old Lotti and 11-year-old Erich. At times separated from the father, the young girl managed the arduous journey to free France together with her brother. Several times they were captured and held in an internment camp. The children were reunited with their father at the foot of the Pyrenees, after which the Red Cross facilitated their departure to New York. On September 29, 1948, Lotti Aronstein and Max Schlesinger, now Mark Salton, were married. Mark Salton found work at manufacturer Hanover Trust Company. In the early years, Lotti Aronstein and Mark Salton earned some extra income by buying and selling coins. Only a few copies of their stock lists are still preserved today. But soon, the couple no longer had to worry about currying favor with buyers. Mark Salton rose up through the ranks to become a member of the management team and his salary rose accordingly. So the couple kept all the coins in their stock and started building up an extensive collection too. These coins, compiled by Lottie and Mark Salton, the Salton collection, will be sold by Stax Bowers and Künker in a total of six auctions. The proceeds will be donated to three charitable organizations. The Anti-Defamation League, which stands against the discrimination and defamation of Jewish people. The American Society for Yad Vashem, which advances the mission of Israel's Yad Vashem Memorial. The Leo Beck Institute, which documents the history and culture of German-speaking Jewry in particular, and whose archives provided us with three of the four documents that enabled us to reconstruct the history of the Hamburger and Schlesinger families. We hope we've picked your curiosity a little. If you'd like to know more, we recommend reading our detailed brochure. And of course, it would be wonderful to see you at the auctions. The second part of the Salton Collection, featuring European gold coins, will be auctioned on March 22, 2022. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.